Hello everybody, I'm Dave Thomas and today I am building the High Flyer by Estes. This is a minimum diameter high performance rocket and it's actually made to go fairly high. And in this video I'm going to show you um, ways to make this as high performance as possible. So let's go ahead and open things up here. All right, and starting with our instructions, we'll find the parts list. All right, so we've got our body tube, and mine's a little bit crushed. Now you could just take this back to wherever you got it from, but I think we can deal with this. All right, we have some decals, small parts bag here that contains the fins, motor mount clip, um, a retaining ring, a thrust ring, base to the nose cone, um, a little bit of clay here for the nose, streamer and shock cord, and then remaining in the bag we've got the launch lug, an engine spacer, and the main part of the nose cone there. So those all look good. And I'm going to go ahead and clear stuff away and we will start on the build. Okay, so to fix my body tube here, what I'm going to do is first use the, the slightly crushed area here as the forward part. And so if I put my nose cone on here, it looks pretty good. Okay, so the nose cone itself will help, help fill out the shape. But we can also stiffen this a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to use some regular super glue. Okay, so you want the runny cut type here. And I'm just going to put a film of this inside the body tube. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of use the tip itself to smear that around. Now you can either just use your fingers to hold it in position like this for a few minutes um, or you can use something like uh, a fin guide and use that to hold it in place. Okay, so here I have a 3D printed fin guide for a BT-22, which this is. All right, and I'm just going to put this in here and this is going to help hold the shape for me. And then I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to let that dry for a good 10 minutes or so. Um, and then we should be able to work with this without any problem. Now for the nose cone itself, we need to add some weight to it. And that's what the little piece of clay is for. Do not skip this step. If you do, the rocket may be unstable. Go ahead and pull that little bit of clay out. Now if you want to use some other form of nose weight, you can, but you need to make sure it's at least the same mass that the clay is. Okay, now for this, I'm just going to break this into a couple of pieces here. Alright, and we'll just dump those down in there. Okay, the instructions show kind of rolling this into a worm, but since we have the open base of the nose cone, that's not really necessary. And then just take a tool, like the handle of an X-Acto knife or something like that. Alright, and we're just going to push that as far in as we can. Okay, and now we'll take the base piece that is also in that small parts bag. All right, and a little bit of plastic cement. Now here we want a nice even bead right along the inside edge. 
but don't get too much there or you'll end up melting the nose cone and deforming it. And then we'll just add the base piece, kind of twist that back and forth to seat it well, make sure it's centered, and then allow that to dry as well. Next we have the fins, and the first thing we want to do is just sand the faces of the fins while they're still attached here. Okay, I'm going to use some 150 grit sandpaper to start with. Now if your fins have already come loose, you can do the same thing. You'll just have to do the fins one at a time. Okay, now I'm just going to take my hobby knife here and cut through the little buds here that are holding them in place. Now I tend to save scrap balsa like this, but if you don't want to save it, just throw it away. Alright, now I'm going to go back to my 150 grit sandpaper and first of all just sand all these edges lightly to remove these little nubbins here. Now the instructions say to round the front edges and that's all they do. Um, I'm going to take that a step further and taper the trailing edges. So to do the rounding here initially, um, go ahead and still use the 150 grit sandpaper here. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just knocking down the corner edges to start with. Okay, and these are fairly thin fins, so you want to be careful not to get too carried away here. All right, but now I'm just alternating sides. All right, and then I'm going to check this in cross section. So right now I've kind of knocked down the corner edges. And now to round it, I just kind of move my wrist back and forth here as I'm sanding. And that is going to round those edges. Okay, and again, I'm just going to keep coming back to check in cross section. Okay, so this is showing it kind of rounded in front but down here on the trailing edge it's still a bit square and that's just because the balsa flexes as we're doing this Okay, and then you can also look along the, the leading edge itself. You see how it's a little bit darker here right along the middle? And that's where the laser cutter was. And so this is another way you can tell whether you've got this properly rounded is whether you can see this or not. So when this is completely rounded, that line will just disappear. Okay, so 
So I've got a rounded leading edge now. And as I said, the instructions have us leaving the, the trailing edges here squared off. Um, but instead, I'm going to taper these. So I'm just going to hold my sanding block at an angle here. And just taper these down. Like with the rounding, you want to go back and forth here and frequently check to make sure you're doing the same amount of pressure. Okay, so here I've got more of an edge toward the inside than the out. Alright, so now if I look at these in cross-section, we want them going to kind of a knife edge there, but with equal amounts of taper on either side. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, now something to be aware of is knife edges like this tend to be really brittle. And so we're probably going to want to have some additional thin treatment here to help reinforce those. Okay, so here I'm just kind of fine tuning my edges. Alright, so now I've got it rounded on the leading edge, square on the root edge, so it'll go against the tube, and then my trailing edges here are tapered. I'm going to repeat this with the other two fins off camera. This part is optional, but I'm going to use some polyurethane based sanding sealer to seal the grain of the fins, and this will provide a smoother surface and, theoretically at least, higher performance. So you're going to need a piece of corrugated cardboard. Um, you could use just an open box or something like that. Um, I'm using this cheap and dirty rocket stand I made some time ago. And you'll also need some straight pins. So what we're going to do here is put the pin into the root edge of the fin here. And I'm going to do it in this little notch just because it's at a good point. Uh, and you want to be careful that you don't go through the side of the fin. And this does not need to go in very far. Okay, and go ahead and do that for the other two fins as well. Okay, and my sanding sealer, I've got in a little jar here. Um, you can get this at most paint stores. Several brands make it. And I'm just going to use a cotton applicator here. You could use a small paintbrush as well. Right, but once I've got my pin in there, I'm just going to coat this all the way around. Um, especially get these trailing edges here where it's at a very thin knife edge. Okay, and then we'll just coat the rest of the fin as well. Try not to get it on the root edge. If you do, we'll just sand it off, but there's no use making more work for yourself here. Alright, then we're going to flip it over and do the other side. And note, I've got several paper towels here. Um, you will want to protect your work surface as this will adhere to them. And it's very difficult to get off once it's dry. If it's still wet, you can get it off with a wet paper towel or something like that. Okay, now what this is doing is it's soaking down into the grain 
and it will fill the low spots. And then we will sand off the high spots and then coat it again and repeat. Okay, so once you have it all coated, then take the pin edge here and you're going to stick that down in the corrugation of the cardboard. All right, and that'll just allow you to do the entire fin at once without having to lay the fin down onto um, a surface where it will just kind of make a film and be more difficult to sand later. In fact, you might even glue it onto a surface. But you can tell right here, that's trying to drip. And so that's why we want a, a nice disposable surface. So these need to dry for an hour or two before we can sand them. And so I'm just going to set these aside and go on to another part of the instructions while they're drying. The repairs to my body tube are finished and so you can see the dried um, super glue in here. And I actually ended up doing both ends. Okay, But now um, these are much stiffer and this will also help prevent possible damage from the shock cord when the ejection charge goes off. Um, but now if I try this with my nose cone, all right, that still fits in there. Um, you may feel a little bit of a ridge here and if it gets in the way of things just take some fine sandpaper and just sand that very lightly around there. Okay, on the other end as well, okay, nose cone also fits there and it's much rounder now. Okay, so with that out of the way, and hopefully your kit came intact and you don't need to do that. And as I said, um, generally you can just take this back to wherever you got it and they'll give you a new kit with an uncrushed body tube. But I didn't want to have to go through all of that. Okay, so now we're going to mark the body tube for the fins and launch lug here. All right, and this we're going to cut out this piece. Okay, um, which when we do is going to cut off a bit of our instructions here. So before I do, um, you can either make a photocopy of this and then cut it out, or just make sure you, you know what's going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this part right here first. Okay, so that uh, we need a mark on the engine spacer at a quarter inch or six millimeters from the aft end which is going to be right here okay now this two and a half inch mark on the body tube um, you really don't need to do and I'll show you why here in just a minute but that's to mark how far up we're going to glue things so you really can't see it from the inside or out. It's just to give you an idea of what's going on. Uh, instead, what we'll do is we'll measure two and a half inches on the applicator that we'll use to do the motor mount. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to do these first three steps. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and mark this, let's see which end do I want, this end as aft here. So I'll just pencil that in so I don't get it confused later. All right. Now you can use an applicator. Um, you can also use 
these little trim pieces here that were left over, you can just break those off and use that as an applicator. And what I'm going to do here is on my ruler, I am going to measure two and a half inches or 6.4 centimeters, okay, which is going to be right there. All right, so I'm going to put my thumbnail down here, and so that gives me the required length. So now I'm just going to dip this into my glue, so I've got glue on the applicator end. All right, and now I'm going to put this inside up through the middle without touching anything until I reach my thumbnail. And now I'm going to rotate that around the inside of the tube, coating it with a ring of glue. And now I'm going to take my thrust ring from the small parts package here. And I'm going to place that inside. Alright, so I've got a little bit of interference from that glue I just put in there. So I'm just going to use this emery file. And just take that down a little bit. There we go. All right, and then the spacer, insert this with our mark facing aft. And we're just going to push that up until we reach that mark and then immediately pull that back out. And that's going to put our thrust ring in the proper place. Okay, so for the rest of this, we're going to wait a little bit and do our fin marking guide now. So using scissors or your hobby knife, we're going to cut this out. Alright, so now you can see we've cut out the area that we just talked about, which is why I did it. Alright, now I'm going to set that over for a bit. Okay, now here, we're just going to wrap this around the aft end. And line up the arrows there. Okay, when you have those lined up, you can just temporarily hold that in place with a small piece of tape. And then use your pencil here to mark each side of the arrows. Okay, so most of these are going to be FL, fin lines. All right, this one is going to be the launch lug line. All right, and I'm going to mark that here with LL so I don't miss it later. Okay, and I'm going to take this back off and we need to save it because inside of it is the um, shot cord mount. Gently remove the tape there. We'll set that aside for the moment. Okay, now for the instructions they say that we should put this against a door frame, um, which you can. It's really hard to do that with the video though. So I've got this little tool made by Estes. This is a tube marking guide and basically it's a whole bunch of straight edges. Okay, so here you just find a straight edge that fits your tube. And now we're going to connect the tick marks and actually run it up about halfway up the tube. That will give us a good guide for applying the fins. Okay, and we're just going to do that with each line here. Coming back to our instructions, okay, we need a mark one inch or 25 millimeters from the aft end, 
Okay, and that is going to be for the retaining ring for the clip. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, they don't show it here, but I'm going to do it this way anyway. Um, I'm going to put this near the launch lug line, not on it, but near it. Let's see here. My ruler rotated around here. And the reason for this is because I prefer to have my engine clips on the same side of the rocket as the launch lug, so they kind of stay out of the way while we're trying to hook up clips and such. All right, so here's two and a half centimeters or 25 millimeters. All right, and then we need another one at two and a half inches or 6.4 centimeters. Okay, so this is the same as about where the um, engine clip should be or the uh, thrust ring should be. So it's going to be right about there. Okay, and now we're going to use the hobby knife here to cut a slit in here. And this should be right below our thrust ring. Right, so I'm going to take the engine clip. Okay, and just the 90 degree bent portion, that's going to go in here. Okay, and then the ring, white ring here, this is going to go over the front end. Alright, we're going to bring this down. Alright, until it's going to be right at that line we just made. So I'm going to bring that back up. And here we want to use um, just a very thin film of glue. In fact, I'm going to use some white glue for this, uh, just because it's a little bit runnier. Okay, so here... Again, a fairly thin but even bead of glue all the way around there. Alright, now I'm just going to push the ring into the glue, and I'm just going to wipe off the excess here. Okay, and I'm going to let that dry. Since I'm still waiting for my sanding sealer to dry, I'm going to go ahead and mount the shock cord. So taking the, the fin marking guide here, we're going to cut this shock cord mount out of it. And again, you can use either scissors or a hobby knife. Um, if you don't want to cut this up, you can photocopy it and cut up the photocopy. Alright, with the shock cord here, we're going to glue this on. And you can use either wood glue or white glue. Alright, so we're going to run a bead of glue over the three and the two regions there. And then I'm going to take the shock cord and kind of mount it diagonally here. And this is to keep it from bunching up on itself so much. And then we're going to take the one section and fold that into the two. And then fold the two and the one into the three. Okay, and this is why we've got these off at an angle, is now the, the shock cord will lay beside itself instead of entirely on itself. All right, now we want to squish all that glue around in there to get the air bubbles out, so that we just have glue and paper on the inside. And I'm going to bend this a little bit so it takes on kind of a crescent shape. And now I'm going to add a little more glue... Spread that around. Ok, 
Okay, and now I'm going to slide this into the forward end of the body tube, and we need to get this down at least an inch and a half so that it does not interfere with the recovery system. Okay, I'm going to turn that upside down, and then I'm going to press this against the inner wall in my hand here. So I've got my finger, the shock cord mount, the wall of the body tube, and then my hand all kind of sandwiched together here. And we want to get this as flat as possible. Now if you've got thicker fingers like I do, um, you can take, say, the handle of your knife here and use that to help squish that down. And again, we, we don't want a lot of air in there. We want to have paper glue and paper and cardboard and such. Okay, so now if we look down inside there, I don't know if you can quite see that. All right, but that's plastered up against the wall there pretty well. And now we'll just let that dry as well. The first coat of my sanding sealer is dry. And so I'm going to just take one of these, first of all, and I'm going to sand it lightly with 220 grit sandpaper. And the idea here is to knock off the high points, but keep the lower areas. So that only in the high areas will we remove the sanding sealer and we'll be building up the low spots, especially the coarse grain that you can see in there. All right, go ahead and do a little bit to the airfoils here. All right, I'm going to do that to the other two fins off camera and then come back. I've sanded all three fins, and if you kind of tilt these at various angles into the light, you'll see that most of it looks dull, woody looking there. Um, but you can see some shiny areas there as well. And those are the lower areas that we're filling in. Okay, so you should see a similar thing here. If it's glossy all around, you need to sand a little bit more. And if it's, um, you don't see any of the glossiness in there, then you've sanded it too far and you need to apply more to it. Okay, I usually do at least two coats. So off camera here, I'm going to put the little pins back in, put another coat on this, and then give it a final sanding. And that will probably be enough for this rocket. My fins are done. They've had two coats of sanding sealer with uh, sanding with one tw or 220 grit sandpaper in between each coat, and then a final sanding with 320 grit sandpaper. And so those are ready to be glued on. So we're going to come back to our rocket itself here. And I'm going to take just a small amount of, let's see, 150 grit sandpaper here. And you can do this with almost any grit. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just lightly sand the areas where the fins are going to be. You don't need a lot, and just kind of roughen the surface a little bit. And this will help the glue hold better. Alright, and now the fins have this notch in them, and that's going to go over the sleeve that holds the um, engine clip in place. All right, and then we're going to have the fins flush with the aft end of the tube there. So for this step, you can use white glue or wood glue. All right, and less is more here. We don't want a great big glob of glue here. We want a thin film. Even that's looking like too much. Take my finger and just smooth that into a nice even film. Go ahead and get down in that notch. All right, as if you have too much glue on these things, it will take longer for it to dry, and you will most likely have a fin that moves on you when you don't want it to. All right, and so now I'm going to go ahead and take this fin, apply it to the line, 
All right, now I'll pull it back off again. And I'm going to let it um, set and let the glue get tacky for about 30 to 60 minutes, and then we'll come back. About 30 seconds have passed, and I've also tucked my shock cord down into the body tube just to keep it out of the way. And here now I'm going to put this right back where I had it. All right, and press firmly there. And then I can sight down, and I want to make sure that the fin is perpendicular to the circumference of the body tube there. And it should be straight with the line. If it's canted one way or another, you want to fix that. Otherwise, you may induce a spin that may look cool if it's intended, but if it's unintended, can lead to problems. All right. If you would like to use a fin alignment guide, this would be a good time to apply it. I've got this one here that um, is 3D printed, and it just fits right over the body tube and then onto the fin. And these are good for having uh, really straight fins. Um, you do want to still have the skill of doing it without the aid of this, but it does give you better looking models in the end. All right, I'm going to let that dry for about 5 to 10 minutes and then go on and do the other fins off camera. The glue on my fins is dry. And now I'm going to add the launch lug. And according to the instructions, that's going to be at 2.5 inches from the aft end. About there. And this goes on kind of like the fins. Uh, we'll just use a thin film of glue. That's a bit much. Now you can be a little bit thicker with this because you don't have the weight of the fin trying to pry it loose. Yeah, I'll put that right on there. Okay, normally you don't need to get this tacky beforehand. Again, it's it doesn't have any leverage on it really. Okay, so here I'm just going to sight down the line and the tube and make sure everything's straight. And now I'm going to let that dry for about half an hour. And when we come back, we'll add fillets to everything. The glue is dry on the fins and on the launch lug now, so we're going to add fillets. Now, because of the position of the um, clip right here, I am not going to add a fillet on this side of this particular fin. Up in here, we can still do that without any problem. Now, as long as you keep the um, rocket horizontal throughout this, we can actually do all of the fillets at once. I'm going to start with the easy sides and then we'll come back to that uh, fin with the engine clip on it. So I'm just going to run a bead of glue all the way down. And it's a good idea to have some tissue or a rag or paper towels or something like that handy here. Right, and just smooth those in. Now with the, the notch here, it may take a couple of tries to fill that in. Um, you could also consider not filling it in at all and avoiding that. Um, it may change the aerodynamics a little bit. It also might make it whistle. But I'm going to go ahead and do my best to fill it in there. So I've got a little bit down here, and I'm going to try and remove that. Because we need this to be able to flex freely. Okay, 
Um, but now I'm going to let this entire thing dry until the fillets are completely dry. Um, and then if we need to, we can add some more. So sometimes we'll get bubbles in here or gaps will form as the glue is drying. And it's best just to let that completely dry and then redo the fillets. You can add a little bit more to it. Um, you can either use more glue or you can use uh, plastic model putty, things like that. But for now, we're just going to let this dry up and then we'll see how it looks after that. My fin fillets and my launch lug fillets are dry. And back here, again, uh, where we have these notches, some of those have some openings in them yet, some don't. And so I'm going to go ahead and add a bit more to them. And this will be in pretty much the same way we did it before. I'm just going to smooth that in. Um, you could, instead of using glue to do this, you could use some uh, plastic model contour putty or even some wood filler. And that's kind of up to your personal preference. And again here, I'm trying to keep that particular fillet from going too far down on the engine clip. Okay, so once again, I'll let this dry, and then we'll do the final assembly. Here I have my rocket fully painted in two pieces. So now all I have to do is tie on the shock cord to the nose cone. You can do that just with a double knot or two half hitches. All right. Make sure you cinch it down tight so it doesn't come loose later on here. And then pull it from multiple directions so that that knot really cinches down. And then cut off the free end here down to about six millimeters or a quarter of an inch so it doesn't get caught between the shoulder and the body tube when we go to put this away. And then I recommend putting just a little tiny drop of wood glue or white glue on that knot just to help ensure that it won't unravel later on. And just work that around the knot there. Okay, and then our last task is to attach the streamer. Alright, so the streamer is here. Um, it's not a very long streamer. You might want to put a little bit longer one on. Uh, but the easiest way to do this is to tape it into place. Um, and I just use masking tape. You can, uh, I found that uh, electrical tape actually works fairly well for this too. The main thing is we want to make sure there's no sticky stuff outside of the streamer. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just take my piece of tape and put the streamer over about half of it there. Okay, I'm going to put my shock cord right along the boundary between the two. And I'm going to fold that tape over and catch the shock cord between the tape and the streamer there. And just squish that down really well. Okay, and then we just fold this lengthwise over itself a few times till it's more manageable. And you can just roll that up. Okay, if you're actually prepping this for launch, um, go ahead and put uh, two squares of ejection wadding in there to protect the streamer. Right. Otherwise, we'll just pack this down in here for now. Okay, and again, make sure you don't get anything caught between the shoulder of the nose cone and the body tube. And give it a little shake test here. It shouldn't come out, but it should come out if you give it a, a firm tug there. If it is loose, just add a little bit of masking tape to the base there until it's snug but not forbiddingly tight. Our last job is to apply the decals. And this one has some self-adhesive decals here, and these will go on either side of the rocket. Or you can put them all on one side, it's up to you. Okay, um, I'm going to put mine so that they're either side 
of the launch lug there so that you'll be able to see one or the other of them on the launch pad. Okay, and these are actually oriented if you want all the arrows going in the right, right direction to go on this way. Now you can just pull these off and stick them directly on, uh, but I found that these things tend to grab that way and it's really hard to reposition them. So what I have here is a small basin of water and I've added just a single drop of dishwashing detergent to it. And this will temporarily lubricate the decal so that it doesn't grab so readily. And now I can position this wherever I want to. And even reposition it if I need to. Okay, So it looks pretty good but not quite straight. So I'm going to pull that back up a little bit. Right, and I'm going to position this so the words themselves actually start right about at the leading edge of the fin. Right, and if I didn't have the water on this, I wouldn't be able to do this. It would be trying to pull the paint up. All right, so now, if I've got it in where I think I want it, I can temporarily just push that down. All right, check that. And if it's where I do want it, then take a tissue and just smoosh that down. All right, now you may see a little bit of cloudiness in there, and that will go away in a day or two. And you might have to come back and re-squish the bubbles out of it. This technique was originally developed for vinyl decals, but these, I don't even know what these are made out of, but it seems to work on these as well. Okay, I'm just going to turn my rocket here and do the same thing for the other one. So that's my finished rocket there, and I've seen lots of these at launches you know, over the years. They do fly very high, so make sure you've got a good open launch field, and even on an A83, this can almost be lost, lost from sight. So I hope you had fun uh, building this with me. Have a great flight and a safe recovery, and please stay tuned for more of my videos.